What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Daily Bible Reading Snapshot. Today we're looking at three more songs from Asaph, Psalm 75, Psalm 76, and Psalm 77. Then we're looking at Romans chapter 6 here in the New Testament. So let's check out Psalm 75. What we see again is that God is the judge. Now, we've seen that a lot in the book of Psalms, but that's a helpful reminder because practically, how should we think about God as the judge? We should remember that when the world is doing its wickedness, that God is going to take care of it. When people are doing wicked things to us, God is going to take care of it. That keeps us from doing certain things. That keeps us from trying to be the judge ourselves by trying to take revenge on people, trying to settle the score. David's life was a big example of don't do that. Asaph picks up on that theme here and says, God is the righteous judge and he executes judgment. It's interesting. He says, it's not from the nations that the judgment comes. It's not from special kings in foreign land that bring judgment. They might come with their armies, but who ultimately is the one who brings the justice? It's God who brings justice. He says, the Lord has a cup of foaming wine. It's well mixed and he pours it out. It's this cup of judgment. We even see the theme, the idea picked up in the New Testament, when Jesus talks about how he's going to drink the cup of judgment, um, he's going to take all of God's judgment on himself. He'll drink that cup and he'll pay for our sins. So interesting that Jesus picks up on that illustration and he is the one who takes our sin for us uh, in the New Testament. So uh, Psalm 76 talks about how who can stand before God. Can anyone stand up to God, righteous or unrighteous? The answer is no. If you're going to try to oppose God, he's going to take you down. If you're going to try to think that you can have some equal playing field, let's say you want to be on God's team and you think, well, I can make some decisions and God can make other decisions. The answer is nope. No one can stand before God like that. God is the righteous judge. He's also the one who makes all the nations bow down before him. It says, glorious are you, more majestic than the mountains full of prey. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both rider and horse lay stunned. And then the, the response is, you should make your vows to the Lord. You should trust in God. You should submit to God. That's the only right response to God being so great. So Psalm 77, one last Psalm here from Asaph, talking about how God is the king and also how we need to trust him, kind of like what we saw before. But specifically, he says, I know that God will hear me. I know that God will be with me. Um, but what he starts to do, Asaph starts to remember the history of God, uh, especially in verse 10 and beyond. Um, after he's asked the question, has God forgotten to be gracious to us? He says, well, I know, verse 10, that I will appeal to the Lord, the, the years of the right hand of the Most High. Now, verse 11. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might to all the peoples. You, with your arm, have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. And then he goes on to talk about how God has shown his power in all of the world. And then he says in verse 20, You have led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Now, important thing for you to see here. Asaph remembers what God has done in the past to remember that he will take care of his people in the future. That is an important thing that we need to see because you might say, well, we're reading the Psalms, but all this stuff happened so long ago. What does this have to do with me? Well, Asaph shows you. What it has to do with you is, you remember what God has done in the past to his people? That'll show you what God is going to continue to do for his people in the future. You remember that God was a savior back then? God's going to be a savior now um, to his people who call on him. So important things for you to take to heart as you read. God's going to be a savior even now. And as we think about God being the savior, Romans 6 is a great passage for us to look to next here in the New Testament because we see, first of all, that there's this question in the reader's mind, and Paul kind of puts it in the reader's mind, if I've been saved by God from my sin, if I've been forgiven, if I've been given peace with God despite my sin, should I continue in sin? Should I keep sinning because if grace is going to catch up with all my sin and even pass up my sin, if I'm going to sin this much, God's grace is going to be even more. Should I just keep sinning so that God's grace would just keep getting added to my life? Maybe that's a good idea. Paul says, by no means. That's a bad idea. Don't keep on sinning that grace may abound. He says, in fact, you should be identified with Jesus. Specifically, when Jesus died, you should say, my old life of sin, that died too. And when Jesus rose, you should say, I'm going to walk in newness of life, as it says here in verse number four. So if you've been set free from sin, the response should not be, okay, well, I can, if I've been set free from it, then I can get as close to it as I can. The answer is, if you've been set free from it, get as far away from it as you can. It says, you've been set free so that now you can be a slave of something else. You used to be a slave of your sin. 
you used to do all the sinful things you wanted to do. The answer now is, no, no, no. Now I'm going to be a slave to righteousness. I'm going to give myself to God. And I'm going to say, I will serve you with my, my body, with my mind, with everything. I'm going to serve God. He says, well, I want to be a slave of righteousness. It says, sin will have no dominion over you since you're not under the law, but under grace. And that's verse 14. But then Paul says, well, what about those of you who say, well, I'm under grace, then I can do whatever sin I want. Not the right answer. So he's combating that idea of of thinking that I can do whatever I want now that I'm a Christian. That's not the way that we should live. We should recognize that we need to fear God and serve him and live for him and give ourselves to righteousness every single day. And that means today. So there's righteous things that God wants you to do today. Give yourself to those things and say, I'm going to do those. Whether it's talking to people about the gospel, whether it's obeying my parents, whether it's being respectful to to leaders, or um, if you have a job, your bosses and your coworkers or whatever, Whatever it is today, I want to serve God. I want to give myself as um, a, s- a slave to him, slave to righteousness, because I know that leads to sanctification and to good things in the end. Paul says at the end here, he says, the things that you used to do, the sinful things, what did that lead you to? Did that get you anywhere in life? No, it just led you into sin, led you into death. But um, the things that we do today where we can give ourselves to righteousness, that leads to eternal life. That leads us to sanctification. That leads to only good things. So it's a gift from God that we've been set free from sin so that we can live for him. That shouldn't be a, a big burden to us. So as we think about that, I think today, how can you be a slave to righteousness? How can you give yourself to do the right thing for God? And also think about how good that is and how it's always better for you to do the right thing. It's always better for you in the end to serve God. So thanks for reading with us. We'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot.